What was the biggest lie you believed? Story 1. On April Fool's while I was getting ready for school on a cold winter day, my mom told me, school is cancelled. It's a snow day. I ran around for a good two minutes celebrating before she told me, April Fool's. I've never felt so betrayed in my life. Story 2. My mom told me when I was five and my favorite dog died that it doesn't matter that dogs die, because in seven years they respawn. So I was like, oh, fine, see you then bud, I will be older and we will play again. Story 3. That my dad moved out and rented a room in the house of a female friend for tax reasons. Story 4. That my parents were married. Truth is my father was, just not to my mother. Story 5. I'm not having an affair, my wife who was having an affair. Story 6. Our family were poor and lived in a house where the ceiling plaster had bowed so much that it bowed down, bulging out. My dad told me that there was a World War II bomb buried in the ceiling. Believed it for years, absolutely terrified the entire time. Story 7. As a little kid, Dad told me that there was a Greek god of intercourse called Philadio. I'd never heard the word before. Then, freshman year of high school, took a mythology class and asked the teacher, in class, why we hadn't talked about Philadio. Silence. You know, the god of sex. I'm cringing hard just typing this out. Got a nice little talk after class and dad almost peed his pants laughing that night. Edit. Thanks for the love for my dad. He was always pulling bullstrap like this until he died of cancer in 2015. I was frustrated with his playful bullshittery as a kid, until I was able to connect with him as a friend in my early 20s or so. He was really into wordplay and turning phrases, as well as Warhammer and WoW. I miss him, and this oral intercourse story always makes me smile. Story 8 when I was very young we had a pet hamster. He got out of his cage, so my dad put the cage in the basement thinking he might get hungry and get back in. One morning I woke up and there was the hamster in his cage in the usual place. I asked my mom how they found him and she told me she opened the door to the cellar and there he was dragging his cage back upstairs. It wasn't until I was a teenager and remembered the exchange that it occurred to me she obviously made that up. Story 9. Outside of dumb lies your parents tell you as kids, my friend who worked at a gas station with a big food station that has some ground beef items told me they use kangaroo meat for their ground beef because it was cheaper than cow. I am gullible with my friends. Story 10. That acne would only be a problem when I was a teenager. Story 11. That adults knew what they were doing. Story 12. When I was like 16 I found out that one of my sisters wasn't actually my sister. She was actually just best friends with my oldest sister growing up, and she lived with my family from when she was like 12 or 13 through 18, she and my oldest sister are 15 years older than me. Unfortunately her parents wouldn't sign her over for adoption and didn't contribute anything for my mom raising her for 6 years. Weirdest part is that my family is predominantly fair-skinned, blonde with blue eyes, but the girl I thought was my sister was traditional Mexican with darker skin, dark hair, and brown eyes. My mom was always very tan and had darker hair throughout my childhood so I thought that my other two sisters and myself were the odd ones out. Story 13. The Tinder account was just a shared account for joking around with my friends. I never even logged in on my own. It was in fact his account which he had been using during the last three months of our relationship. And yes, I knew how unbelievable that sounds but I refused to believe that the man I trusted so much would ever do this to me. Story 14. I'll fill up my car with gas before work tomorrow morning. Story 15. That a full career and retirement from the US Navy would guarantee me free medical. Story 16. When I was a kid my cousin convinced me for like an hour that her mom had won the lottery. I can still feel the loss of millions of dollars two decades later and that shit hurts bro why Jessica, 
why? Story 17. The microwave will explode if I put my face too close to it while it's heating food. Story 18. When I grow up, I'll always be able to do what I want, when I want, oh my sweet summer child. Story 19. That justice will always win. Story 20. Bullies get bored if you ignore them. Story 21. My dad got sick of having to listen to the kids' shows I watched as a child, so he told me that the Power Rangers and Barney the Dinosaur died in the car crash with Princess Diana, so I couldn't watch them anymore. I didn't actually question it until I was quite old, embarrassingly. Story 22. I had dumped some gasoline in an Arizona tea bottle to get a fire started. My sister seen me pour it on fire and she freaked thinking Arizona iced tea was flammable. I went along with it saying, yeah you didn't know that? That's why it's called Arizona because how hot it gets there. She was 20 years old. Around 5 years later we are camping and she says who's got some Arizona I can use to start this campfire. I looked at there and didn't understand. She explained I told her it's flammable. I had no recollection. She says she has been telling everyone for the last five years how bad it is for you and how flammable it is. Story 23. If you go to college you'll get a good job and have a nice house. Lying 90s third grade teacher. Story 24. My church isn't a cult. It was a cult. Story 25. If you simply put your head down, do what you're told, and work hard, things will work out. Story 26. That it's not what the outside. It's what's on the inside that counts. No matter how you cut it pretty people get better chances in life. It doesn't matter what you do if you look like Quasimodo you can put in the most effort on a given task they would rather swing the credit to anyone else. Story 27. How hard you work would be proportional to how well rewarded you would be. Story 28. It's illegal to turn on the dome light while the vehicle is moving. Turns out it's just annoying as hell. Story 29. That you need a license for children's parties. That was the reason why I never had a party when I was little growing up. You need to get a license from the post office, but there's only a certain amount of licenses available for that area. Story 30. Parents love their children equally and unconditionally. Story 31. I love you. Story 32. I was a Mormon for way too long. Story 33. Half-Life 3 being released. Someday. Backslash asterisk cries in never backslash star. Story 34. That someday everyone meets their person and live and love together the rest of their lives. Never happens for some of us. Story 35. That I won't have a calculator wherever I go. When I was in school, I used to believe that I needed to memorize all the math formulas and multiplication tables because I wouldn't have access to a calculator wherever I go. However, with the advancement of technology, I now carry a calculator with me all the time, in the form of a smartphone or a smartwatch. So, that belief turned out to be a big lie. Story 36. The American Dream. Story 37. It will stay just between us. Story 38. I had a fraternity brother from New York come to university in Oklahoma. This was before the internet. We told him to be careful of rattlesnakes. We explained what they were. He did not believe. So, we took him to the library, pulled the encyclopedia, and showed him. He then asked, what else can kill you in this state? Without missing a beat, one of our brothers said, they probably won't kill you, but you have to watch out for drop cats. He then went on to tell him how this kind of cat, 40 pounders on average, evolved to use the cat trait of landing on their feet to kill their prey. They would climb trees, hanging upside down, then drop, feet down onto their prey. Only defense? An open umbrella. This guy walked to and from every class, on sunny days, 
not a cloud in the sky, opening his umbrella as he walked under every tree on the campus. Lasted about three weeks. Story 39 I swear on my mother's life I'm not messing around with your wife we're just friends. Story 40 That America was family-oriented, cared about its citizens and was everything I saw in movies growing up in the UK. Then I moved here. No health care. No guaranteed time off. Bankruptcy for cancer. Hatred for minority groups. I've never experienced such a culture shock. I asked for five weeks paid vacation when I arrived, which I got in England. I was literally laughed out of the interview. 22 years later things have not improved. Story 41. About a year into our relationship, my ex told me that she wasn't attracted to me when we started dating, but she went along with me courting her because she didn't want people to keep teasing her for being a virgin. She supposedly fell in love after a short while, but it's hard to know how much of anything she said is true after hearing that. Story 42 When I was a kid, my dad told me I made the best cold glasses of ice water. Nobody could make ice water quite like me. So, sure. He could get off the couch and get himself a glass of water, but since I was better at it, that burden fell to me. Story 43 Girlfriend swore to God she was on birth control, I had no reason to not believe her. One day, while running around my apt, late for work, I bump into my bookcase, and several books crashed to the floor. I go to pick them up real quick, and my eye falls on a page that fell open, and I see the word, pregnant. What's this? Apparently some diary my girlfriend had been keeping, as it was all in her handwriting. Okay, so, pregnant, dot. Ah, better read this page real quick. And it was this whole entry about how she was worried, because she was not getting pregnant, after months of trying. Say I I wahaat. So I put the book back, and then later on quizzed her about just what sort of birth control she was on, and of course, her answers were dodgy as fuck. Story 44 That people joined the army out of patriotism and love of adventure. Found that out the hardest way possible. Story 45 We are just friends lol, when you ask what's going on b slash w him and a friend. Story 46 that three inches was enough. Story 47. That if I do enough good, good things will happen to me. I still pity the small child who ran herself ragged tying to help everyone and destroyed her mental health because she thought that she was a bad person if she didn't dedicate every waking moment to other people. I didn't deserve that. Story 48. You can trust people slash work colleagues. Story 49. When I was 15, over my summer break, one day my mom called and said she was gonna pick me up and we were gonna go to my stepdad's for the weekend. I didn't understand why I had to go when she would leave me at home by myself for the weekend all the time. I was old enough that I knew the rules and she could trust me. She told me there was a mix-up at the electrical company and they seemed to think we didn't pay the bill and so the power was gonna be shut off, so we were gonna go to my stepdad's until that got sorted. That was a lie. A weekend during into two weeks, turned into a month and then the entire summer. We hadn't been home in over two months. I kept asking when we could go home and she'd always have an excuse. Now we're in September, she's driving me from one city to my hometown to register for the following year of school, which started up in a week, this was the closest I had been to home in two months. After I registered, we bypassed my house and started heading towards the highway to go back to my stepdad's. It was at that moment I snapped and started freaking out. I knew something was wrong. She pulled the car over and started crying. Apparently, my brother had been helping her pay the bills and when he moved out, she could no longer afford the place on her own. So my stepdad was trying to help but he had his own house and kids he had to look after, and he couldn't keep it up. We had been evicted. We stayed with my stepdad for the summer while my mom tried to work something out with the landlord but they couldn't come to an arrangement. 
Because she never told me, and in order to buy herself time to work something out, she had to be comfortable with potentially leaving everything behind, well, she couldn't work it out with the landlord and we lost everything. Only thing I got out of that house was the shoes on my feet and a few outfits slash PJs enough for a weekend stay. Story 50 My dad told me when I was young that, when you go to the wrong place, you'll find the wrong man, my cousin is happily married to a man she met in the club. Truth is, even man from church sucks. Story 51 The Cake Story 52 The government has the best interest of the people at heart. Story 53 Oxycontin isn't addictive. Hi, I'm posting from my last week in rehab, I hope. Story 54 That the system we live in is good and needed. Story 55 One morning my bro and I woke up to find two chicken eggs in our hamsters, both male, cage. My parents told us that they were actually hamster eggs and ours were going to have babies. We got so excited. The words, April Fools, brought us to tears. Story 56 You are imagining things because you are crazy, I have many mental health difficulties. If I was told I was imaging things I would spend a lot of time beating myself until I thought what I was told to think. Turns out I was not imaging things. I was just being gaslit to protect someone else's pride. Story 57 That I was the problem in my family. In reality, I was just the scapegoat. Now I'm an adult and's painfully clear and I'm validated because I've learned everyone else who knows my immediate family also sees it too. I realize I was treated so badly because I was the only one who saw something wasn't right and the only one willing to point it out. Story 58 Things will get better. Story 59 not, the biggest lie, but still ducked up so I'm gonna tell the story when I was super young my brother got a German Shepherd from my mother. We also had a Yorkie. The German Shepherd attacked the Yorkie because my dad was a shit dog owner and would just let them do whatever they wanted. My dad also lived his entire life in spite of my mom once she divorced him for being abusive so like a week later, the German Shepherd is gone. And then a few years later I cut my dad off and stopped talking to him for good since he was so abusive to me just to hurt her, I was her favorite, my mom ended up dying so I got stuck back with my father for a year from ages 17 to 18. During my 18th birthday, my father got super drunk, on par for him, drank all the alcohol me and my friends bought and smoked all my weed. While he was drunk he came up to me and my friends and said something to me, you know that German Shepherd your mom got your brother that she absolutely loved? Yeah I took it out back and shot it, and then he did the most evil laugh I've ever heard an actual human being do and then I found out, any time my family got rid of an animal. My psychopathic dad would just take them out back and shoot them for entertainment. On my birthday, I learned that almost every animal I ever loved was executed by my father. And there was a lot of animals he just didn't feel like taking care of and got rid of, I cut him off for a reason all those years ago. He disowned me once I moved out, I came out as bisexual and that was just too much for him. As if I ever wanted anything to do with him in the first place. I wonder what he thinks now that his son is a woman with a boyfriend and a girlfriend and does porn LMAO. Story 60 Therapy is only for the weak, stupid, or crazy. Real men don't show any emotion other than angry or happy. Everyone will take advantage of you. Don't let them, nobody is to be trusted. There were lots. Story 61 HR is here to support our employees. No. They are not. Story 62 that growing up and becoming an adult would be the best thing ever. Story 63. You can be rich slash successful if you work hard enough. Story 64. My dad would tell me that when the ice cream truck was playing music it meant that it was out of ice cream. Believe that shit till about five years ago. Story 65. Student loans are good debt. 
Story 66 That my father loved me. Story 67 That if I was patient and worked on myself, I'd meet someone. Also that I would have to try in order to not knock someone up. LOL. Story 68 I love you, there's no one else I promise. Story 69 That some people were my friends. It turned out they only talked to me so that they can get homework answers from me. I've always had a hard time knowing if I was being taken advantage of. Story 70 Not myself, but a lie I told a friend. Back in my high school days, a few of us were walking through a train yard. There was neat piles of sand here and there. One of the group, Robert, asked what those were about. I told him that they're a thing for a gang that usually operates on rail lines and yards. After they kill someone they pour a bucket of sand where this happened. In reality, trains have sand and dumps them on the tracks to help with traction. A few years later, a group of us were crossing a rail yard as a shortcut. Robert was with us, and he seen the piles of sand and got freaked out. We asked him what's up, he repeated what I told him. Then told us we should split. I couldn't contain my laughter. I reminded him that I told him that, and that I made it up on the fly. He believed this for several years, and refused to go near rail yards during this time. This was also in the 90s. Story 71 That politicians represent the people who elect them. Story 72 That the mini wrestlers were children of the regular wrestlers. Story 73. I used to be a Jehovah's Witness. That's gotta get me on the board. Story 74. Friend of mine told me that soybeans picked in the daytime were used to make soy milk and soybeans picked in the nighttime we used to make soy sauce and that was the difference between the two. I told so many people. Story 75. After my mom and dad separated people bugged my mom to get dating again in that, you're not getting any younger, kind of way. So she started joking that she had an imaginary boyfriend named Bob the Alien. Bob became a staple in the house. At some point my mom had to get a hysterectomy due to a very large and life-threatening fibroid but my brother and I were too young to fully get what that meant. So she explained that she was carrying Bob's baby and they had to cut the baby out of her and bring it back to their home planet. My little brother and I believed it for a long time. Story 76 When I was in kindergarten, my family and I went on a family vacation in Myrtle Beach. I was so excited to go and the number one thing I wanted to do while there was fine sand dollars. When we got there, unknown to me, my parents asked around and found out that there actually weren't any sand dollars there. So my dad went out to a gift shop, found some sand dollars, and buried them in the sand. He had me dig in that area to find the sand dollars. I'm 24, and up until around 4 years ago I really thought that I had found real sand dollars in the sand at Myrtle Beach. When my parents told me it was an elaborate scheme created by them, my life was forever changed. Story 77. That family will always be there when you need someone. Story 78. Mormonism. Story 79. That I was expected to spend months' salary on an engagement ring. Diamonds are such a scam, and I hate that I fell for it. Story 80. I was told as a child that Disneyland has an underground jail for bad kids. I was always very well behaved when we went. Story 81 My birthday's on New Year's Eve, so little me thought all the fireworks were for me lol. Story 82 I'll tell you when you get older. Story 83 The seven years gum thing. Story 84 When I was seven my brother told me my dad wasn't my real dad and it was actually an Elvis impersonator from the area called Johnny, he told me not to tell my dad I know cause it would really upset him. So I spent years and years thinking the Elvis impersonator was my dad until one night I was with my dad and started crying saying I know everything he was confused at first and then called in my ma'am who was equally confused. 
I told them my brother was the one who told me and when they confronted him he had completely forgotten and had no idea it had been plaguing me for like five years. Story 85 That we were only poor if we felt poor. This, as member of a family with eleven children. We weren't poor, we were well past that. Story 86 When I was around five or six, my mother, to stop me from messing with the buttons in her car, told me that the hazard light button would blow up the car. I was understandably terrified of it until I was thirteen and realized how stupid that notion was. Story 87 This is a bit of an unpopular opinion but when I was younger I believed all Canadians were kind. I've noticed many are passive-aggressive and can get very disrespectful. Discrimination is still prevalent and most are not very inclusive. Not saying people from other countries are better or worse. I feel there is a false narrative foreigners have about people from Canada. Story 88. That I was loved. Story 89. That when you're 18 you'll be an adult. I actually believed 18 was like a magic border where everything changed. Uh no I'm 23 and I still haven't got it figured out. Story 90. That money can't buy happiness. Thanks for tuning in to Peak Reddit. We hope you enjoyed hearing the latest and greatest stories from the most interesting corners of Reddit. If you loved what you saw and heard today, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join the Peak Reddit community. You can check out more videos from us, you might like them. And if you have any amazing stories or experiences that you want to share with us, we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a comment or shoot us a message and let us know what you think. We'll see you in the next video.